Okay, hello everyone. And this is my first live stream and I'm happy to for you to join. And just let me know if the voice levels are, are good. If everyone could hear me okay. I know there's like some delay before you you're able to hear me. Okay, so I got a response and it seems the audio levels are fine, so let's begin. Okay, so this this live stream is gonna be about building up building a virtual PC using 86 box, which is basically my go-to emulator to for PC emulation. Um, what's awesome is that you could build a PC from starting from the 8086 era all the way up to the Pentium 2 eras. And it gives you the closest experience to building a real PC. So, you know, you choose um, the hardware you want to build, like graphics card, CPU, memory, all things of that sort. And then you, you also have to, you know, install um, the software, set up BIOSes, and all things of that sort. So, let's begin. So, basically, here I am at 86box website. And the first thing you'll need to do is download the the program i'm choosing the stable build you can always download experimental builds with new features but i usually stick to stable builds and then you have different options to download um, for different os's there's linux linux port mac os port and a windows port it's one of the reasons why i cho chose 86 box over pcm because there's readily available ports to Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. For PCM, I had to, to compile my own version um, for Linux. And even then, I had issues. I was successfully able to build, build it on Linux and get it working on my PC for Linux. This is PCM. This is not 86 box. But for some reason, um, if I would try to, the PCM version of... of um, on the Steam Deck, it wouldn't work, but on my PC, PCM would work. So, and then I believe that PCM has no Mac port. So, and I also have a, a MacBook Air as a laptop. So it's good that 86 box allows me to use it uh, easily on Linux, Mac OS and Windows. Okay, so I'll download the, I'm, I'm on Windows right now. So I'll be downloading the Windows 64 bit version. And here I am. You'll want to extract the zip file that you download. Onto a folder that you choose. I call it 86 box. And open up the folder. Um, when you first open it up, it should ask you to, cause you need um, ROMs of the BIOSes and the, and the BIOSes for the video cards to actually get this running. So on the first one, it should ask you that you don't have anyone, any ROMs. Okay, so no ROMs found. So you'll get this window and then you'll be given the option to download the ROM set. And there's a link right there, right on the pop-up. So if you click that, It'll take you here to the ROM set and you want to download the source code zip. And then open up that ROM set zip. This is what confuses some people. In order for the ROM sets to work, you'll have to create a new folder called ROMs. You can't use the prename folder in the ROM set, like what it's named after its version. It has to be ROMs. 
and then go into the on the zip file go inside the folder and then you'll see a whole bunch of fo subfolders for floppy hard disk um, BIOSes and other things and then you extract all this onto the ROMs folder okay and now when you open up 86 box it should default to an 8086 machine Okay, it's good. Uh, I'm going to be building a Pentium 200 megahertz machine um, with Voodoo graphics. And I'll be installing DOS and Windows 95 on it. So, hey, hi, Belmont. And hi, Joseph, Neil, Red5, and Round to it. Thanks for joining the stream. Okay, so again, I'll just say that I'm building a virtual PC in 86 box. And I'll be setting up um, a Pentium 200 megahertz PC with Voodoo graphics. So to start that, you want to click the gear, this gear icons, which is for the settings. And here we have the options of the machine to pick. I'll be selecting the machine type. I want it to be a socket seven dual voltage. Then the machine, I found that I got success with, um, which was this one, the i430VX PC partner. I like its BIOS configuration. I'll be choosing the Intel Pentium at 200 megahertz. And I'll pick 32 megabytes of RAM. So a lot of RAM for, for that time. And then the display, I'll be selecting a PCI S3 verse 325. And I'll enable the Voodoo graphics. I'll configure that. I'll leave this. I'll leave this at two megabytes because in a specific game, um, Screamer 2. It doesn't work well with four megabytes and I have to switch it down to two megabytes. So I'll leave this at two megabytes. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Luisa. Glad to, for you to join the stream. And now let me select the input devices. Mouse, I'll select a standard PS2 mouse. This is more compatible but one thing you'll notice with this is that the mouse isn't very smooth. You'll have better luck choosing Logitech Microsoft Bus Mouse. And if you configure it to 60 hertz, you'll get a much smoother mouse experience. But it's, it's, um, it's less compatible that I found. So I'll be choosing standard PS2 mouse just because of compatibility. And with this configuration that I'm building, I found that it works really well on a Steam Deck too. So for sound, I'll be selecting a Sound Blaster 16. I'll leave these settings as is. These are the interrupts, the DMA channels, and port addresses. The next thing I'll be selecting network, I'll leave that as is. I haven't yet tried doing network on 86 box, but eventually I want to set up a retro NAS server. I have a, a backup server and then which I could, and I would like to set up retro NAS on it. And then also set up a proxy so I can browse some websites through that server. Ports are leave as is and the storage controllers. I'll leave this as is also and hard disks. Here's where you choose to build to create the hard disk images you want. And you will select a new one. Specify. 
I'll name this. I'm gonna I'm gonna create two DOS images. One, well, two disk images. One for a DOS install and another one for a Windows 95 install. So I'll do this DOS. I'll set it to one gigabyte. Hit OK. Leave everything else as is. Hit OK. And then I'll create another image. 195. And I'll set that to one gigabyte also. Okay. I'll remove this because I'm. You could, yeah, you could set up um, dual boot if you want, but I usually just um, switch the hard disk images I want to 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 use. Um, I'll usually make a copy of the eighty six box um, folder, so so I can have a separate Windows ninety five and DOS setup. Okay, so floppy. I want the floppy to be a three and a half one point four megabytes and I won't need a second floppy for CD ROM I use a tappy and leave the rest as is the removable drives I don't need this other peripherals I don't need this okay so here I basically just built got the components I wanted to use for this machine. And once I hit OK, 86 box is going to reboot. And then we'll see a new bio screen. So we have this. Now, before I continue, let me configure, do some configuration in 86 box. So I want to Choose a rent. I'm going to use OpenGL because OpenGL 3.0 um, will allow me to use shaders. And then there is a scaling shader that I like to use with 86 box. And then for a window dimension, I'm going to be switching between windowed and full screen mode. In the window mode, I want to set a specific resolution 1352 931. Lock it to the size. Okay. So every time I'm in window mode, it'll it'll always go to this size. And now one thing I don't like about 86 box is by default its filtering method is linear and I feel it's too blurry. I can choose nearest neighbor to get get a sharp, but when it's constantly switching resolutions, you're you're gonna notice some distortion on the text. So I found a good way to get like good scaling, good sharp scaling is to use a a specific shader that you down a RetroArch scaler. So you download it from the RetroArch, you either an installed version of RetroArch or you can download it from the RetroArch GitHub. The shader is will be inside the pixel art scaling shaders. So it will be this shader, pixel underscore a a g l s l. Oh hi Lon, thanks for joining. And then so with this shader, I find I find you get really good scaling. So if I choose to hold on a second to if I choose not to lock the size and and I resize it. It does a pretty good job in not distorting the text with this with this shader. If I take out the shader,
then it's kind of hard to tell, but it just, you'll see, especially with text, you'll see text really distorted if you, um, by using the, the nearest neighbor scaling. And then the other option is to use the linear, which is way too blurry. But let me choose that scaler again. Hello, Angelique. Um, thanks for joining. Okay, so now let's continue. Oops. All right, so now I'm here at the bio screen and since there's no hard drive and like a real computer, you're going to get like CMO settings wrong, all these messages. I'll hit delete to get into the BIOS. Actually, no, and it's the first time set up, so I had to hit it, hit F1. And here I am the BIOS. So one good thing I like about this specific BIOS, it, it, it has... um. The detect IDE it does a good job of detecting the hard disk and and the CD-ROM. And then here we go. It detected the one gigabyte hard drive disk images disk image I created, and it also detected the CD-ROM. Oh, I'm glad you. I'm glad my video helped you check out 86 box. So hopefully this will, will guide you through how to set it up. Okay. So now the hard drive and CD-ROM is detected. I also want to go into standard and specify the, I'll go to primary master. No, actually, no, I want to set up the floppy disk. I want to say, and it's already 1.44 megabytes, three and a half. I don't have a floppy B not installed. So, okay. So that's okay. All right. And I also, under the advanced setting, I want to, well, I'll leave the boot order as is now. Later on, I'm going to set the boot order to CD-ROM when I install Windows 98. I'll close that. I'm done with the BIOS setup. So I'll close the BIOS and save changes and exit. Then it's going to reboot. And once it tries to boot, it's going to say there's no system, no boot disk. So I have a disk image of DOS. So to load up a disk, a floppy disk image or any disk image in 86 box, you want to click on the media option or even down here, there's a floppy disk option. And then you want to select an ex existing image. You could create a new image here too, but select an ex existing image. Then I'll go to where I have my OS's, OS images. Oh, and I'm going to be installing DOS 6.22. Oh, hi, Shemups VR. Thanks for joining. Okay, I'll select the first disk. And if I hit enter, it'll start booting the DOS setup. And here we go. Then I'll switch to full screen. And then we'll just wait for the DOS to start. Here, I'll hit enter. I'll configure the great thing about DOS 6.22, it'll configure your hard disk for you. So you won't have to use F disk, configure the partitions, which is about to do now when I, when it restarts the setup. Ignore the background, the windows 95 background. That's not part of the DOS setup. That's part of my OBS background. Okay, it's restarting and we should be seeing 
the DOS setup continuing. Here we have DOS formatting the disk. I'll leave these settings as is. Yeah, for some reason, um, when I switch out back and forth from a different program on my second monitor and to it, the OBS screen shows my background. So let me see if I can remove that. So, so you won't get confused about with the Windows 95 setup background. <laughs> okay, so I'll continue here. These settings are correct. I'll leave the DOS installation folder as is. And the setup will begin. Oh yeah, it's a cool background, Lon. <laughs> it brings back so memory. I've installed I installed Windows Windows 95 so many times. <laughs> My first experience with it, with it was back in college, my freshman year, which was around the time that Windows 95 came out. And I got my second PC. And the computer actually didn't, didn't work well <laughs> uh, when it arrived. So, well, those are software issues that certain things were working, but I was able to reinstall Windows on it and just continue working as this. Which also get that gave me an option to not to remove any bloat that the computer might have had. Let me actually okay, so let me actually go back to windowed mode. Okay, so I could switch disks. So now I'm going to select the second disk two on the DOS for the DOS disk image. Hit enter. Oh yeah, Windows definitely was a game changer, especially with gaming and, and kind of plug and play. <laughs> it worked somewhat. One thing I realized now, it's like, um, I install windows far less. Cause like a lot of things, a lot of things are done over the cloud. So you're able to keep your installs much cleaner now. Oh, thanks a lot. 60 FPS. Oh wow, midnight opening of Comp USA for Windows 95. That must that must have been cool. Okay, now it's asking me for disk three. I'll go right here and then for at the actually am I covering it up? Let me move. Yeah, I was covering up the the disk image icon. So down here on the left right corner there's a floppy disk image and then here you can select a new a new disk image to change or you could go to the top in the media menu to select a new disk image and then i'll select this three and hit enter oh of course only 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 us nerds would think that's cool <laughs> Okay, so I think that should be, I think it's only three disks. Anything else is, I think it's supplemental and I won't be installing. Yeah, there's a supplemental disk image, but it's not needed. So I won't be installing that. Oh, hi, Ori Retro Gamer. Thanks for joining. Here, you have the MDOS setup. 
one thing I wish 86 box and PCM had were like uh, options to turn on floppy disk sound. That'll def definitely kick up the nostalgia a bit. Okay, so they're warning me to eject a floppy disk. Just basically go to the disk icon and click eject disk. If I leave the disk in, then I'm going to get an error saying that no invalid boot device. So I'll hit enter, enter again. And now the boot, the system will restart. Oh, that must have been exciting, at least trying to get it installed. I hope you got you were able to get a good night's sleep. Okay, so we got DOS installed. The next step I'm going to do is um, if any of you have heard of Phil's computer lab, he has um, a really useful boot disk. Let's see if I could. Hold on a second, not that one. He has a really useful DOS boot, boot disk that the MS DOS starter pack that basically um, creates different configurations um, for booting your PC. So as you know, um, if you use DOS a lot, you know, sometimes games require a certain amount of memory, certain configurations like conventional memory, you know, EM386, all that's all that store, so all that stuff. So this boot disk gives you a whole bunch of options to to pick to for different configurations. So I already created a disk image for that, a floppy disk image. So I'll be selecting boot disk. So the disk is installed. I'll go to the A drive. Wait. It's not working. Existing image. Hey, the image is not working. I probably did something. All right, I got my first technical difficulty. So I probably just have to recreate the image. So I'll do that now. Oh, I'll have to try the virtual Mac emulator. We'd love to hear those floppy sounds again. Okay, so... To create floppy images, I use win... Image, yeah. Yeah, the, it seems like the floppy disk image I created earlier is not working, so I'll just create a new one.
Okay, and now I'm in Windom Image. I'll create a new 1.44 megabyte disk. Okay, I'll drag. Now actually I have to go inject the folder. I am a all right, so hopefully this image works. Existing image um, starter pack. Okay. So it worked, it reads it. All right, so in the starter pack, I'll click install. Click, I'll type install. And then let's continue. And then now the new DOS menu is installed. And also it, the good thing you have um, the CD-ROM driver installed too. So I'll restart to restart. There's a restart button up here to the top left of the 86 box window. Do restart and then once it reboots back onto DOS, I'll get the starter pack menu. Uh, okay, so usually the first option works pretty well, so I'll hit enter. Yeah, we have the CD-ROM and mouse drivers. And one of the really cool things about 86 box is that now that I have the CD-ROM driver installed, I can map a folder on in Windows or Mac or Linux to the CD-ROM. So if I have a whole bunch of files that I want to copy to the to the installation, I can map I can choose a folder that I want to copy to. So let's say I want to map it to actually, uh, yeah, I'll just map it to this videos folder. If I go to the CD ROM drive, which is, which is D. It shows the folders, the listing of the folders there. So this really makes it a lot easier to copy. You don't have to create disk images. You don't have to create floppy images. Just map, just um, set the CD-ROM to a folder on your computer. Um, PCM has this feature, but only on Linux. And then so, so on Windows, or I probably never got it to work on Windows, but that was my experience. And this is one of the reasons why I moved to 86 box. Okay, so let me see what's next up on the agenda. Next thing to do is VM setup. Okay, I'm gonna install the Sound Blaster 16 DOS driver. Fast setup. So I think I have that. I don't know if it's a CD ROM ISO or let me see what I have it as. Okay, so it's a CD ROM ISO. So you can also mount, you, know, you can also mount any CD-ROM ISOs or images that you have to read those instead. So drivers, sound. Okay. 
So let me go to the CD-ROM drive, list, it, list its contents. And there, there's, there's an install executable. There we go. I don't know if I have sound. Let me, yeah. Hold on, I don't, I don't think I have uh, my desktop audio set up. So when I install this, I want, I want the sound to work. Let me set up OBS to capture the audio. Okay, so that's done. So hopefully it works. And continue with the setup. Full Transport. I, I've actually never played Transport Tycoon, but if it's anything like the other Tycoon games, it, it should be pretty good. I'll do full installation. I'll leave this as is. Okay, let me make sure these match what 86 boxes are set to. Sound configure 220, 330, 515. Yeah. This match. And then here's the installation. Okay, the installation also configures your auto exec.bat and config.sys files. So the game can properly read the settings. Okay, I'll reboot the system. I'll eject the starter pad. Let me reboot the system. Oh, hi, Victor. <laughs> Thanks for joining the stream. Okay, I'll have to check out the the Transport Tycoon soundtrack. Okay, so I have um, DOS pretty much set up and ready, and I think I'm ready to install some games. So what am I going to... I'm going to install Screamer 2, which is a pretty cool racing game. So I'll choose the disk, it's disk image. I can choose it from up here or from the bottom. There's a CD-ROM on the bottom left. Okay. Go to the D drive. This is contents and install. Do normal installation. I'll leave that to fit. I'll install both. Full installation. Source. Wait, wait, wait. Oops. Normal. Full. Full games. Yeah. Okay, so now it's installing the arcade, well, pretty close to an arcade experience on the PC. Screamer 2. The Screamer series are pretty pretty fun to play. And then there's a patch that, that I'm also going, going to install for 3D effects support. So we'll be testing that out too.
So Chad, what are what are your favorites favorite um 3D FX games? Oh, thanks a lot, Lon. Thanks for the super chat. I appreciate it. Um, the file type for the CD-ROM, it, I'll let you know right now, it supports ISO and BenQ images. So, unfortunately, I don't think it supports, um, CHDs. And then I don't think I've seen CHDs. Well, I never use them for PC images. I've only used CHDs for... For PlayStation and Saturn images. I remember when I first got um a Voodoo graphics card. It was around 97, 98. And it <laughs> it was mind blowing. It pretty much like you got um I got I got much higher resolution and much higher and much higher frame rates in an instant. Like the smoothness was like instantly noticeable. Oh you're welcome, Ori. It's like right now the the jump in graphics um is less noticeable. But I, one thing that I appreciate now that um, they're concentrating more on providing more higher frame rate experiences these days. I remember back in the Xbox 360 days, um, dealing with with sub 30 frames per second games, but now now we're getting options to to put games in high frame rate mode. But I'm a PC gamer anyway. I've I've Xbox 360, Xbox 360 was my last console, and then after that, I just went exclusive PC nowadays. Okay, the installation is almost done. Have any of you in the chat um, played the DOS Screamer games? If you haven't, we'll soon about to see a little glimpse of it. All right, so installation is successful. We'll first try the vanilla version um, in software mode and then I'll install the 3D effects patch. Oh, thanks a lot, Angie. I really appreciate the super chat. Okay. He All right, I'll leave it in low res mode. Keyboard, I don't have a controller connected yet because um it all depends what type of game you want to play because you could set up racing wheels you could set up um, um digital game pads i'll just stick to keyboard for now so i have a sound blaster 16 21 and 5. Ooh, the DMA port is wrong. I can, I can think I can do the auto detect. Yeah, that worked. Let me test sound. Did you guys hear that? The revving, the engine revving up? Hey, Pixel Cherry Ninja. Thanks for dropping by. Love your channel. Everyone check out Pixel Cherry Ninja. He has a pretty cool channel. 
Oh, hi, Ario Asus. Thanks for stopping by. It's my, it's my, it's my first live stream on my own. So hopefully things go well. <laughs> hopefully nothing, nothing crashes. <laughs> All right. So you guys heard, okay, great. You guys heard the, vo the, the revving. All right. Sound card is set up. And then save these settings. Oh, wow. Thanks a lot, Luisa. I really appreciate your super chat. That's very generous of you. Okay, so now I have Screamer. So now let's test out the game. All right, so the execute to executor, I hit S2. I'm not going to be playing it for long. I'm just going to be doing a little demonstration. I still have to show you guys how I install Windows 95. And I'm going to lower the volume of the 86 box. Yes, this game does bring back memories. And put a space. Now right. choose arcade mode. And then we go into full screen mode. Now what? Oh, wow. Thanks a lot, Teresa. I appreciate your super chat. All right. Obviously, I'm using the keyboard, so it's not really that comfortable. But this game was pretty amazing to have on a PC back in the days. There's only software mode. It's hard to control with the keyboard. I'll stop for now and <laughs> let me install the 3D effects patch so you guys can notice the difference. <laughs> Rumble thumps, yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 Screamer definitely does not sound like a racing game. Oh, that's oh, thanks. Thanks a lot, Ario. That's pretty. Oh, oh, that would be really awesome. I'll get in contact with you about it. Um, okay, let me see where I have the patch installed, I think. All right, so I'm going to map. I'm going to have here. So I'm going to map this folder as a CD-ROM. So I believe I have where the patch is. So yeah, it's here. And I think that this instructions are just to copy. Um, 
install patch. I think I just have to copy this S2 3D effects executable. Copy S2 3D effects. All right, so now let me run the patch S2 3D effects. Okay, so yeah, so it replaces the current S2 executable. So if I run it now, there should there's going to be 3D effects support. There we go. I have the 3D effects patch. To disk. Okay, I'll switch to the Screamer 2 disk. Yeah, you can notice the filtering and the In the games. One thing about 86 box is that the more powerful machine you use, the, the more powerful hardware you need. Right now I'm using a, my CPU is a 5950X. And my GPU, I don't think the GPU does much as far as I know. I have to read up more on that, but my GPU is a is a 3080. But with this specific setup, um, it runs really well on a Steam Deck. Oops. Oh, thanks a lot, Victor. Thanks for the super chat. But now, yeah, you can notice like the resolution is much higher than before, and I'm running at a better frame rate actually the same rate is pretty much the same but i know if i try to run run it in software mode on this machine in this high resolution it will be slower oh it froze i think oh it froze I think it had to do with I remember okay that's weird because before if I had it set to four megabytes then it would freeze in screamer too but now it's freezing with two megabytes okay I'll have to look that up later Okay, so the next thing I'm going to install is the Tomb Raider 3D FX demo. Oh, hi, Treasure of Euphoria. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining the stream. Really happy to have you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I, when I first was was testing this um it was freezing on me because i would um set the frame buffer to the voodoo for four megabytes and then i read somewhere that if you were using two megabytes it wouldn't freeze and then that worked before but now <laughs> the same thing is happening so just retro things like you said okay so now i'm going to install the tomb raider demo 3d effects demo so I think I have it. I have it. Um, demos and shareware. Do I not have it here? I don't think I do. Oh, I thought I did. But let me install Quake.
Okay, so I'm in the CD ROM install. Thanks again, Treasure Euphoria. I'm really happy you joined. So install it to my games folder. Um, Arfa, yes, I will be installing um, Windows 95 after I finish this Quake installation. Not not able. Oh, thanks for the super chat, Treasury, for you. Really appreciate it. All right, so I'm installing the Quake, the classic id software game Quake. This was the first game that I use um, with mouse look. And then if I remember correct, correctly, you, you, it's not enabled by, the, by default. You have, to, you have to bring up a console command to enable mouse look. Okay, seems to be some read errors. Okay. All right, so there were errors in the installation. Let's hope the game works. Okay, there we go. Now, let me see how to turn on mouse look. Okay. Plus and look. Okay. Uh, there's no WASD. <laughs> I have to configure that. So I'll play a couple of minutes of this and then I'll move on to installing Windows 98. Ah. It's not really as comfortable playing with the arrow keys. It 
Um, Ariel, yes, it, it could do OpenGL. Um, but I don't think the DOS version does OpenGL, the Windows version of um, of um, Quake. But I, I'll, I'll be I'll be install. I'm gonna install Windows 98 now. No, Windows 95, and then I'll install Quake and then use the OpenGL version of um, Quake 2, actually. Quake, I think, requires um, more finagling to, to, get, to get the Geo Quake working. 86 box, DOS box is basically... Um, you're not building a PC with DOS box, whereas um, with 86 box, you're, you're choosing specific hardware. DOSBox is just a program that basically emulates DOS. You do have options to pick certain hardware, but um, it's not like building a PC. Yeah, Rumble Thumbs. Um, Quake, yeah. It, <laughs> Quake doesn't have the default of WASD, so I didn't feel like configuring that. All right, so now let me set up the Windows 95 image. Then I believe it requires a floppy disk too. Then I'll restart. Yeah, one one of the cool things about Aria, one of the cool things about um, eighty six box and PCM, you could actually emulate up to the Voodoo three graphics card. On the display, you have option. Yeah, you could do the Voodoo three up to the Voodoo three three thousand. Yeah, Exodos will probably be like the pretty much the easiest way to actually run games. It has like a menu system. I personally like setting things up like this. So I haven't the only thing I use Exodos for is to obtain <laughs> some games. But um I usually um copy Exodos files onto um hard drive disk images I create in 86 box. Okay, actually, I created a. I'm gonna switch hard disks because I created a separate hard disk for for Windows 98. I'll remove that. One thing when you're switching hard disks, you wanna you wanna make sure that is using the primary channel. So here, when you add a new disk, it it adds one to the channel. This should be zero, zero. Oh yeah, the Voodoo just gave you straight up performance over the TNT. I remember the TNT had better image quality, but I just couldn't compete on performance. I actually, um, after graduating college, I actually got an email from NVIDIA that I want a PC, and that included a Riva TNT Ultra. I was like, wow, people actually want stuff? That actually happens? It was an AMD K62, so... It came in really helpful. I said, I need a new PC after graduating. Okay, so... The setup is... No, okay. We 
when I keep messing up the beginning of the setup. Okay, the, that driver is now working. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that was a pretty cool CPU. Okay, I'm going. Okay, so actually, yeah, since the the hard disk is not being detected, I I have to run F disk on it. Uh, CD. I think. I think when the one ninety five folder has uh, F disk. Okay, yeah. I'll create the partition. Primary DOS partition. Now where you start should be able to begin this installation. Oh yeah. AMD d definitely had the price versus performance battle one. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, and, and I have an AMD CPU. I still use AMD CPUs. I do have um a a server that I have Intel on it, my backup server. Okay, now that's fine. It's not formatted. So I expect that to fail. So I'll start the Windows 95 setup. Ah, I do have to format. Okay, that's only um, 95. Okay, now the setup should work. Not sure. And here's the classic Windows 95. I remember doing, you seeing this this screen so many times. Let me go to full screen. Hey, that 6502 is a classic. 
used on so many machines. Okay, I'll just do typical. Wait, actually. So I think this one, one, one. I think this. Hold on, I have the. Oh, it exited. Oh, come on. I hit exit by accident. Okay, I'll have the serial number ready this time. Yeah, my my first actual real real computer. I, well, I don't know if you'll call it a real computer. It was the Aqua Mattel Aquarius. It was it's a really bad computer, but actually, that was the first time I started coding, which which had basic built in. But I forgot what CPU it had. But yeah, but it had NES at the time, so so there's no the NES was so much better than that computer. The C sixty four was awesome, and Ori the the eight hundred um was that was that the one that what what the fifty two hundred was based on? I believe the eight hundred the Atari eight hundreds, the Atari fifty two hundreds were just basically the same. Except um, Atari consoleized the 5200. I'll just do typical. Yeah, you even have to enter the serial numbers here. Okay, yeah. I had a cousin who had the 5200. I remember just the um, version of Miss Pac-Man and it was so much better than the Atari. All right, let's let Windows do its thing. Yeah, like I men mentioned earlier in, in this chat, my first experience with Windows 95 was, was um, I got a new computer my freshman year of college, and it had Windows 95 built in, but the computer would, wouldn't boot. It was an issue, um, some software issue, but um, since it had like the original disk, I was able to reinstall Windows on it and just set up the computer the way I wanted to without any any bloat that it might have had. But yeah, I'm very familiar with this setup. Okay, install the most common components. Yeah, I'll let, I'll let everything be the default. And if I need anything else, I'll can always copy it later. All 
I didn't do the start of this because since it's a virtual PC, I can always back up the hard drive just by make creating a copy. Take your time, Ariel. <laughs> this, uh, as you probably would know, Windows 95 is not going to be a quick install. So I'll have to install. I think I'll have to install some drivers and some software. Let me make sure I have the appropriate, appropriate disk images ready. Okay. Yeah, and this PC build has a Pentium 200. What I'm building here in 86 box is a Pentium 200 machine with 3D effects Voodoo graphics. Mm -hmm. An S3 Verge 325 2D card, Sound Blaster 16, and 32 megabytes of RAM. And I chose this particular setup because it runs pretty well on a Steam Deck. If any of you have a Steam Deck and want to turn it into a retro PC. Oh no, don't tell me you accidentally erased your games. Oh, that's devastating. Oh, but... Though, <laughs> sometimes you learn the hard way. It sucks, but I remember on my first PC, a, um, a 486, that one, I almost, I almost blew, blew out the motherboard because I took it apart just to see how the insides were. And when I put it back together, apparently the, um, I put, I inserted the floppy disk ribbon cable the wrong way. And I guess at, at that time, it didn't have like some way to block it. So you were able to do it backwards. And when I turned it on, the floppy disk, just like I saw smoke coming out the floppy disk. And then the floppy disk didn't work. <laughs> that pretty much sucked. So That was actually the first time I opened up a computer. Okay, so Windows 95 setup is finished. I'll eject the floppy disk. Yeah, I know the aspect ratio is off on this. Eject. One thing I wish um, 86 box had was is better shader support. Like right, like you can choose some some CRT shaders, but they're only one, you can only use one pass. And since with a PC, there's constant resolution changes, 
you it it just once it switches resolution and i i think the shaders are meant for specific resolutions and once you change the resolution the, the shader might look down from at one time while other times it just won't look good at all if it, if you switch resolutions so the shader i use is okay ah uh, Yeah, I remember experiencing this. Um, I'm going to have to copy the... I should have done this from the start. I need to restart this and copy the Windows 95 setup files to the C drive. I totally forgot to do that. Yeah, the Windows 95 setup, for some, for some reason, it's not detecting the CD-ROM drive. So it can't continue the setup. Uh, Reset again. Uh, didn't load the floppy image. Okay, so I'm going to boot from the Windows 95 floppy disk. And then reformat the C drive. And then copy the Windows 95 setup files. Uh, which um, the Windows 95 um, not detecting CD-ROM, Joseph, Joseph Neal, that the same issue you had? the x copy command I'll search uh uh with so it's with windows 98 yeah I'll use the dask existing image. I'm going to load a dask image. Dask. Dask 6.22 image to use the X copy command. If it's there you go. No, it's compressed. Wait, are there subfolders? Oh, no, there isn't. oh, there is a subfolder. Content. Uh. 
Yeah, PCs are very unpredictable when trying, trying to get things to work. Especially back in those days. STOS? Um, no, what is that? I don't think. Oh, for Atari ST. Um, no, um, the only programming I did um, was um, on the Mattel Aquarius with BASIC, and then I also, and then after that, that I started, I did programming on the PC. And then first with Quick Basic. And then in, in college I did um, C and C++ and Java. Now I do mostly C Sharp. But yeah, I never had an, an Atari ST. I do plan on making a, a video on the on the Atari ST core for Mister. And one thing I'm trying to get working is uh, is um MIDI keep. I want to experience how MIDI music was done with the ST. Yeah, there's a lot to copy. Sorry, so what was your experience with the program? Did you program with the STOS? And how was that? Hopefully... I hope this folder is not required. <laughs> is that the only subfolder? Content. Yeah, that's the only sub that's the only subfolder. Yeah, it just seems this is just a bunch of ads. <laughs> it's just a web file. So I have the setup files. Back to the setup. Oh, we got more 6502 programmers. Any specific favorite 6502 systems? You know, obviously, <laughs> the Atari 800XL is one. Jeez.
Let me get this serial number again. Uh, sound card installed. Oh, that's pretty cool. Pico, I'm gonna have to look that up. This Pico Computer sixty five hundred two. I've seen this guy on YouTube. I think his name is Ben. That he he was des designing a sixty five hundred two computer, also, which is pretty simple. But the video videos are pretty interesting to watch. Yeah, you really had to have intimate knowledge of the of the hardware back then to really get the most out of it. Okay, install the most components recommended. No startup disk. I'll just copy the disk image to back it up. Use long file names to make your file. <laughs> that was that was huge. It was pretty annoying using being limited to eight characters to name files. Yeah, Ben Eater's videos are really informative. Have more fun. Windows 95 gaming. Still went to DOS a lot just to play games. Okay, if any of you are new and are interested in using 86 box one thing i recommend um because 86 box you're able to use shaders i mentioned this at the start of the stream but you'll notice that by default 86 box has only two options for scaling um linear which is which is um pretty blurry and then there's also the nearest neighbor scaling, which when you when you resize the image, you'll get like a lot of distortion. So a good shader to use for scaling in 86 box is a retroarch scaler called pixel underscore AA dot GSL. It's unfortunate that 
you can only use single pass shaders, but I've read that the 86 box team is working on um, supporting multi pass shaders. That's when you, you that's when you can use multiple shaders at the same time. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, the multimedia was like was like really cool back then. Being able to see video on a com running on a computer, even though it was grainy, um, was pretty cool. I didn't have my I didn't have Microsoft Encarta. I had Compton's Interactive Encyclopedia, and also had like um the first eighty six four eighty six PC I had also had a Mayo Clinic Family Health book. And then, you know, I will spend hours just like, just like going through the article, seeing like the, the, the images and videos, you know, things that we take for granted now. Okay, it's loading up now. Now when it restarts, it should look be able to find the hard drive to continue the installation. Eject the floppy. Now the plug and pray device. <laughs> Hoping that your plug and play devices will be detected. But I don't think I set up any plug and play devices. I know you do get the option in 86 box to use the Sound Blaster plug and play edition, but I chose to stick with a regular Sound Blaster 16. Okay, the setup is working. Now, oops. Uh, negative five Eastern. I'm in the on the East Coast. Uh, I'll cancel the printer. printer. Set up and the restart. Oh, yeah, that's a <laughs> awesome wallpaper. I remember seeing that wallpaper so many times. It would just be annoying to do it after your PC configuration is messed up and you have to reinstall everything. I hope you heard the classic PC sound, the classic Windows 95 sound. Animation. No, I do not want active setup. Okay, the CROM is detected just fine here. Uh, Okay, so let me see what hardware is detected. OK, 
Okay. I have more updated drivers, but I'll leave this as is. Okay, Sound Blaster 16 is detected. So this PC multimedia video device is the Voodoo 3D graphics card. So I'm going to be installing that. Uh, I didn't really want it to. I don't really want it to do this, but I'll let it. <laughs> Eventually, I want to figure out. I haven't tried networking an 86 box. Eventually, I want to try to figure out how to set up, but I'm gonna. I want to set up a, a VLAN on my network just for these old computer setups. Because uh, I'm a bit wary of setting up networking on a Windows 95 computer. Any favorite Windows 95 games with you guys in the chat? For this stream, I'm going to be, I'll soon be installing Quake, Quake 2. And try the OpenGL version of it. The Quake GL, Quake 2 GL version. Yeah, I don't, I don't really want to install anything else while it's doing this thing, and it's forcing active setup on the on me. Okay, why it does that? Let me finish. Let's finish copying this. Yeah, I remember with Quake 1, my the PC I had at the time, the 486, it didn't have a FPU, so I wasn't able to play it. It was I was so sad when I tried to run it and then I got the FPU er, FPU error message. But I was able to go to the computer labs in my college and actually play it on the labs on those computers. Okay, it's almost done. Yeah, the Quake games, it was amazing to see a full 3D environment. Um, on the, the 486, I found, um, yeah, cause I had a 486 too, a 25 megahertz and, and that also had 
a problem a problem running doom but i found um back in the days that if you um if you hold down shift um while dos is booting to skip all the loading of of drivers and the config as what config.sys and auto exec.bat files i found that doom ran a little smoother with none of, none of those tsrs loaded But yeah, still wasn't a, still wasn't as good as a faster Pentium, but whatever I could do to get to eke that little performance, eke out some performance. Okay, so yeah, look at it, it forced this horrible desktop on me. So let me just hopefully I could disable it. There you go. Okay, now to install the Voodoo graphics drivers. Okay, I have it as a as an ISO. Oh, that famous Windows error. Uh oh. <laughs> what happened? Let me try restarting. Oh yeah, I like the fact that Sega actually attempted to to port their games to PC. Okay, no error. Ooh. Woo. So update the driver. Families come first, Ariel. <laughs> no. Right now I'm installing the Voodoo graphics driver. So... It's not It's not detecting it.
we sort of found it. Oh, hi, JT, J. Trevor Scott. Thanks for joining. Good morning to you. It's actually evening for me. It's 9 p.m. in New York City. Oh, yeah, yeah, Windows 98 was definitely a huge step up. And then when they added USB support, that was also a game changer for Windows 98. Uh, don't remind me of Windows ME. <laughs> I had a Dell laptop that came with that. And it literally used to cr crash all the time. Okay, so v the Voodoo graphics is installed now. That there should be here. Yes, it is. Okay, what's next? All right, so now let me install Quake. Quake 2, actually. Uh, no. It's not a driver. Install. Yeah, definitely have to. I don't know. It's a fresh install, so I'll install DirectX. Okay, I'll let it install the new driver. It's nice when it actually, uh, when setups like these actually recognize the hardware and are, and are able to install new drivers. Okay, yeah, I'll let it, I'll let it install the driver. Maximum space. Yeah, I did the same thing. I went back to, I found an old one. I, I got a window, copy of Windows 98 and removed Windows ME. I remember Windows 2000 being pretty good. The unfor only unfortunate thing is that, uh, you know, you couldn't really play many games with it. It had a decent support for some games, but Definitely a step up from <laughs> instability. <laughs> I I can um there's ways to to speed up the installs. I probably should have picked the faster CD ROM drive. But you know, sometimes even on real PC, sometimes with fast CD ROM drives, you'll experience some compatibility problems and then you have to slow them down 
So yeah, a boost CPU would be nice. <laughs> a fast forward function. But it's all part of the experience. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying it, 60 FPS. Yeah, um, ABO hiccups. Uh, with the future FPGA devices, that's what I'm most. That's what interests me the most is um, the capability for using um, more powerful PC hardware and even Mac hardware. So, it's like. For me personally, the Mister does everything that I want. Um, it was a bonus to get. It was a bonus to get um, the 32-bit systems like the PlayStation, Saturn, and and Nintendo 64. After those systems, I really don't care about. Um, I don't. I really don't emulate those systems that any systems past that that much. So as far as my retro game is concerned, it's limited towards. Um, like the 32 bit systems and before but pc hardware if um the future fpga systems can do can emulate pentiums or or later 68000 max or power pc max that would be awesome It's, a, it's on an N, NVMe. So it, it's a fast NVMe. It's a 7,000 um, gigabytes per second NVMe, but it's, it's the nature of the emulation. It, it, it emulates it at, at the original speed that you choose. There are options. The hard, hard disk um, copying is fast with 86 box because you do get options. Let me look. Um, actually. When you're doing hard drive copies, you do have an option to to basically um, run as fast as your RAM, as fast as your RAM can handle it. But using a faster um, NVMe drive or SSD isn't really going to help when it's emulating a it's emulating a 8x CD-ROM drive. Yeah, there's. Let me show you the CD-ROM options. Yeah, I'm emulating an 8x CD-ROM drive. You could choose up to, I probably could have picked 872x, but sometimes I experienced some, some perform, um, some compatibility problems with faster speeds. um not really um yeah I, um because um when i installed this i copied the windows 98 the, the windows 98 um set windows 95 setup files to the virtual hard disk so i still think there's some limitations to the virtual to the virtual hardware so i don't think you're gonna get like instant um instant um performance Okay, Quake is installed. So now let me run it. Let me go to full screen. Actually, the mouse is a little too fast. Let me change that. That's a little better. Okay. 
I'll run it first in software mode and then I'll switch to to the GL open GL version. Okay, so. Yeah, I don't think I've had a, a CD-ROM that fast, 52X. Okay. Hold on. Let me see how to install, how to set up mouse look in Quake. Uh, look that up. Wait, two mouse look. Is it the same? Okay, I think it was the same. Okay. Um, that's not working. Yeah, it's M look, not mouse look. Oh, Duke, Duke Nukem was awesome. <laughs> Another classic. Yeah, and this is this game is before the days of WASD. I don't feel like configuring them now. Okay, so now let me change the video options for OpenGL. Oops. Do the effects OpenGL. Why? And there's a huge difference. <laughs> yeah, it was unbelievable to see like the changes when you install the 3d effects card on your computer games would be like super low res to get to get a good frame rate but once you had a voodoo card on that machine that was something Oh, I remember Pod. I think that game also required an MMX CPU, if I remember correctly. That's the beginning. Well, I think I'm gonna end the stream. This was, um, I hope you guys enjoyed um, and learned something, you know, about 86 box and what you can do with it. It's pretty. It's a really pretty cool program and, and 
my favorite way of setting up building virtual PCs and and being able to use retro PC gaming. Yeah, I, I only had the Voodoo 1, but yeah, I always wanted a Voodoo 2 also. So. Yeah, playing Unreal Tournament games. That must have been a blast for you. 60 FPS. Oh, thanks, Trevor Scott. Glad you enjoy the channel. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, that's pretty cool that the Mr. is being used all the way in Bangkok. So happy to see people enjoyed it, enjoying it over there. Oh, the vo the guy that does the vo Duke voice <laughs> can also is an ordained minister. He can marry people. <laughs> That's funny. But anyway, thanks to all all of you for visiting. I really appreciate I really appreciate um you watching. It was fun showing this off and and if you have any questions you know just like on my videos just post any questions or on twitter my my twitter handle is lou underscore source let me see if i could i'll paste it in the chat yeah yeah, I plan to do more videos on 86 box and more computer videos in general, like on the Mr. 2. And then there's also some a program for Android um Android devices that is kind of like 86 box that allows you to build PCs like this. So that's something I haven't played around with it much, but that's something I'm looking forward to to use around because it will be cool to turn a tablet into a retro PC. Uh, ABO ABO hiccups. If you have, if you have a a Meta Quest, you, there's actually a Game Boy Advance, a Game Boy Virtual Boy um, emulator that you can um, use. So that's that's a suggestion. Just if you have a Game Boy Advance. But anyway, thanks a lot, everyone. I'm glad you joined the, the stream. It was fun, and I'll speak to you guys on the next video. So take care, everyone, and thanks a lot again.